So here's what we got going on today. We are starting a new retaining wall project around the back side of the house. There's the eight inch block I'm gonna use for the wall. Had to move a rain collection barrel temporarily. You can see I have a super fancy diversion pipe taped up there. Very nice, top of the line technology. And then I have this ridiculous jungle that I've just really let go. So step one, let's get this jungle taken care of. Okay, so we got that jungle cleaned up. Here's a couple wooden stakes I laid out, I don't know, probably a month ago. That's about where the end of the footer is gonna be. All right, less talking, more working. Okay, so we got that all formed up. You can see the half inch number four rebar laying to the side there. I'm just gonna wet set that once we get the concrete in the hole. You probably saw me driving some T-posts in. There's some tops of them right there. That's not really for vertical strength as much as it is just lateral forces. At some point, I'm gonna pour a pad on the house side of this, but I don't know how far down the road that's gonna be. So that's just a little bit extra insurance to keep the bottom from scooting around. I don't know if it's really gonna help all that much, but I'm sure it can't hurt anything and I had them laying around. What does hurt things is the wind. I set this camera up to get a sweet time lapse of getting the concrete in the hole with the wheelbarrow. Unfortunately, the wind had other plans. Well, Dad went out to take a nap, so I'm gonna do his voiceover. He was going to use the wet set technique, but the concrete has started to sit. So now he's using the dad plan poorly technique. It is very popular technique at our house. Let's see how it works for him. Looks good. I know because he told me. <laughs> All right, so we finally got this footer poured. We got the concrete in. It did not go as smooth as I'd hoped, but the great thing about concrete is it's always finished, whether you are or not. So I kind of straightened that rebar up that we wet set, using that term loosely, and uh, just dry fit in the first course of block, making sure that this rebar actually is in a pretty decent location. And believe it or not, my math actually panned out, everything kind of fit. So I'll get you a close up of what's going on with this rebar here. You can see on that first one, it's pretty much right center in the in that core. That one's a little tight, but it's not that big a deal. We can make it work. This is the only one, I think I'm gonna have to cut this one off. It's right at the joint of these blocks. I don't know what I did wrong there, but. We'll just cut that off. That's not that big a deal. The rest of them are pretty much dead center in the cores. I've got to uh, adjust my siding over here next. I'm just going to take that siding off and probably slide the starter strip up. Trim that vinyl corner back a little bit. This is an ICF house. You see right here, new Dura. Yep, ICF house. So I've got to get all this foam cut back so it's bare concrete. Um, I'm trying to figure out, I think I'm just going to trim this block right here. Just cut here. And maybe on the other side and just take that whole corner off lay it up bare against this concrete give it a good solid resting point but yeah so we'll just call this part one of a i don't know how many part series on this uh, retaining wall project but be sure to uh, subscribe 
and ring the bell so you can see how this retaining wall turns out.